It's a pernicious disease that can become perverse because you never expect it to come. Diabetes is uh, the disease causing uh, more cost for the society than any other disease in the world. And it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, the complications of diabetes are very bad. Stroke, uh, blindness, myocardial infarction, um, impotence, kidney failure, heart failure, uh, foot wounds and uh, amputations. The number of cases has been multiplied by 30 in the last five years. Diabetes is the only non-contagious disease for which we use the term epidemic. Diabetes is one of the main public enemies in Europe. According to some studies, this elusive disease affects up to 62 million people, almost 18% of the European population. Researchers are inventing groundbreaking tools to introduce new treatments, more accurate early detection and better education in the prevention of the disease. It's just another hard training session at a gym at Dublin City University. Here, individuals at high risk of developing type 2 diabetes volunteer to see how exercise can delay or even prevent the onset of the disease. Essentially, I came here for the, uh, in relation to my, my heart problems, but uh, I've discovered that my, I seem to control my diabetes much better as a result as well. Grab some water and you're moving to walking next. It's only a small sip of water, it's not a barbecue, let's go. I really believe that if I wasn't coming to this programme that I'd be seriously ill now, or maybe even dead, you know, I think I would have, I would have sort of fallen back, my health would have fallen back so much that I'd be sort of curled up in a ball in bed at the moment. You know. Scientists at this European research project track the volunteers' physiological improvements. Research has confirmed that regular exercise and a healthy lifestyle can prevent the development of the disease in high-risk individuals. Patients, they lose body weight, they lose body fat. We can improve their fitness levels and we've seen improvement in things like their glucose levels, which is obviously a major risk factor for the development of type 2 diabetes. conclusion was not a surprise to Christian and Lone. Both Danes have type 2 diabetes. They often share their experiences with newly diagnosed patients at a local clinic. The disease caught them both off guard. I was 18 when I was uh, diagnosed with uh, diabetes 2 and I remember they called it as uh, old man disease. So I was uh, not thinking myself as an old man, uh, just a normal guy with something a little bit uh, extra on him. I had a shock when I was diagnosed. I, I didn't know what to do, but the doctor told me to, to eat less. <laughs> and I had some exercise swimming, but I didn't do anything at all uh, sometimes because it was very hard for me. It remains a challenge to effectively identify those at high risk of developing diabetes so they can be better informed in disease prevention. Our project is aiming to dig into the deeper levels of the biology of type 2 diabetes to see if we can find in the blood tests or in some other modified tests quick ways of forecasting that yes, this person is at high risk and should, be, should have preventive treatment or this person is at very low risk. Scientists in Denmark are working to identify new disease markers other than glucose levels in the blood. And almost three years of lab analysis has paid off. We have been focusing, for example, on the lipids or fats uh, and have identified uh, several individual molecules that can predict onset. Medicine is moving from a more general approach to a much more personalized approach. My hope is that our research will really help people with diabetes or people who are at risk of diabetes 
of getting a much, much more personal service for medicine. How can we detect diabetes? Here in Finland, scientists are developing systems to guarantee early discovery of the disease by the eyes and the feet. This optical research lab has a new outlook on how to detect diabetes. Engineers here believe diabetes can be diagnosed by closely monitoring the eyes and the skin. Around 30% of diabetes patients develop cutaneous problems, particularly in the feet. Researchers invented a camera specially adapted to detect diabetes-related foot wounds. It has a 5 megapixel CMOS sensor. Uh, it has uh, our own imaging algorithms. Uh, for this uh, special project, we have modified uh, the optical and uh, illumination part of the camera. The optical equipment was combined with ultrasound and thermal technologies to provide scientists with complete sets of images that can signal an early stage in disease development and prevent eventual disabilities in the patients. The different colors uh, enhance different features in a patient's uh, skin. By making the documentation not only with the standard color image, but uh, separately with uh, all three different color channels, red, blue and green, we will uh, be able to highlight uh, those changes more accurately and with uh, different detail. Finally, how can we improve the existing treatments? Here in Strasbourg, researchers are working to develop the next great revolution in the treatment against type 1 diabetes, and their secret weapon is a bio-artificial pancreas. Alain lives with type 1 diabetes. His pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin, the hormone that regulates sugar levels. Lack of insulin leads to increased blood and urine glucose. My diabetes was diagnosed during military service. I was 24. That was 36 years ago. A simple urine test detected I had too much sugar in the blood. From that moment, the world collapsed a little. As with other type 1 diabetes patients, Alain depends on daily insulin injections to control the glucose level in his blood. An effective treatment but it does have important limitations. If we, see them, we must try to provide this insulin to the patient more or less the same way the pancreas would have done it if it had continued to work. We know the pancreas creates lots of insulin during each meal to stock glucose in food. And on the contrary, it creates less insulin in between meals, especially at night time, to control sugar production by the liver. The development of a bio-artificial pancreas is the aim of project scientists at this French research center. Their idea is to introduce in the patient's body a biocompatible membrane complete with cells able to secrete insulin. Sugar will be able to pass through this semi-permeable membrane. It will then signal its presence to the cells stocked inside the membrane. These cells will be able to create the necessary amount of insulin to return sugar levels in the blood to normal. Cellular therapy has the advantage of being autonomous, researchers say. The system activates itself when glucose levels rise. The main challenge for scientists is to increase the survival of these therapeutic cells in a closed environment. We really need to find molecules that will help us optimize the presence of oxygen inside the bioartificial pancreas. Then we'll have to address other issues. But nothing is as deadly as lack of oxygen inside the membrane. Scientists see their research as a much needed alternative to pancreas transplants. Even if we had at our disposal all the pancreases potentially needed for transplants, we could treat just 0.01% of patients living with type 1 diabetes, just 10% of the population of patients. So our idea is to address this problem through a physiological approach, a cellular approach, that can be helpful for all patients.
pending technological developments and clinical tests, researchers expect the bioartificial pancreas to become a reality around 2019. This is clearly the road ahead. The disease will always be here. But with this system, we can ensure a long-term, easy treatment for patients, a treatment that would also be safe and free of side effects. Patients and high-risk individuals say they hope scientific breakthroughs in prevention, detection and treatments will further improve their quality of life. Exercising is, just makes you feel better, you know, in every aspect, even down to your looks. You kind of feel different, you lose a bit of weight as well, which is a benefit, and um, it's great. The things I want a lot to do is to climb a mountain, um, so I think my life is quite normal, and I think actually my life is becoming more helpful after I've been told that I have this uh, diabetes too. Uh, instead of just being this lazy boy who I think I was when I was 18. It took me over 10 years to, to learn how to deal with diabetes. Uh, nowadays I'm running a lot and uh, exercise a lot. Either in the night or the morning or the afternoon I run, I do sports, I play tennis. The disease does not put any limits on my life. I have no limits.